This is not going to look nice on the same soil poster. Don't read the textbooks. That's what I'm telling you. Must not. <laughs> I was right in school. <laughs> so climate change cannot be addressed without addressing the soil quality at all. But if all of us sit here and there's no food for four months, how we die is most Very good terrible. Soon. Now we know about this, but what can we do? If we act now, in the next 10-15 years, we can turn this around. The soil is not our property, it's a legacy that we have received. We must pass it on that way to future generations. So Sadhguru, I have uh, heard you speak about it in a few uh, videos that we actually watched, in a few articles that I read, but um, the crux of it all was that everybody's talking about climate change, which is great, which is a newer conversation, but it's new. Um, you say that a lot of these issues can actually be fixed with the right policies, but the one issue that cannot be is soil erosion. No, we're not talking about soil erosion. We are t talking about soil extinction. Extinction, that's right. See, right now, here you are, you see the stream. When did it last rain in this place? More than two and a half months. At least two and a half months, am I correct? Yeah. How is it flowing? Where is it coming? Is there a snow cap sitting on top of the mountain? Do you see any snow capped mountains no. here? Nothing. So, where is the water coming from? This is soil. Mm. The soil up there is so rich, the rain that happened two and a half months ago, it held that rain and now drop by drop, if you actually go up and if you have the patience to look, you will see it will be seeping drop by drop and those drops all gathered like this, like this from this mountain itself as you go from here. From here, if you travel five kilometers, there are four streams. These four streams go and join into what we call as the Noyal River. That Noyal River supposed to flow and join Kaveri, unfortunately these days some of the towns have stopped it. But this is how a tropical river happens, drop by drop. We receive rain, monsoon rains, only for seventy to ninety days in a year. Mm. This ninety days of rainwater must stay and flow for three hundred and sixty-five days. Unless you have very organically rich soil, that will not happen. So, climate change cannot be addressed without addressing the soil quality at all. Uh, how did we get here, Sadhguru? What was it that first triggered this? Well, if we have to talk about the India story, it's happened worldwide. Mm -hmm. But uh, India story, because most people here may know uh, certain, you know, uh, facts about this. For example, we have had terrible famines till 1950. 1942, the Bengal famine took 3.2 million people, 3.2 million people in four months' time. See, when people die of famine, it's not like a war. Mm -hmm. If a bomb drops, all of us will evaporate right now. Well, that's not good, but mm -hmm. it's okay, at least we just evaporated. But if all of us sit here and there's no food for four months, how we die is most terrible, so. okay? Most horrible ways of death and that's what happens during famines. Right now, most people, at least the young people think famines happen only in Africa. No, it was happening in India till 1950. It has happened in every part of the world, including United States of America, famines have happened, all right? So just about everywhere famines have happened. Because of famines, many civilizations have collapsed like the Mayan civilization, the Mesopotamian civilization, even the Roman city collapsed because of famines. So what is a famine? For some reason, we are not able to grow food where people need it. Well, today we have enormous capability to transport food from one place to another. Right now, this is happening. World Food Program is dis last year distributed nine billion dollars worth of food yes. in Africa. Yeah. This year, they need f fifteen billion. So, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. So, how long will you be able to transport food and feed large populations? That is not a reality, okay? That is not a practical reality at all. So, people have to grow food where they are, mm. at least within reasonable distance mm. we have to grow food. 
If that has to happen, soil has to be rich. How did we get here? That's a question. Well, because these famines were happening, we went into what is called as today industrial uh, level of farming, or in this country we call this green revolution. Mm. This green revolution was very needed at that moment because it was an emergency. Yeah. People were dying and dying. hundreds of thousands of people dying of uh, lack of food. So, they went in aggressively putting fertilizer, this, that. First three to eight years, it worked very well. With a burst of yeah, There was a burst. Crop. Already the soil was reasonably rich and when you threw the extra chemicals into it, it just burst out like that. See, right now, uh, you are eating good food and you're well but you put some extra vitamins and yeah. proteins and this and that into your system, suddenly you will feel fantastic tomorrow yeah. morning, all yeah. right? This happened to the soil. But suppose because you felt so good taking these pills, tomorrow you stopped eating, mm. no food, you just take handful of pills, which a lot of people are beginning to do. Well, there is a price, yeah. that is the price we are paying. Yeah. So we forgot that it's the organic content in the soil which makes this happen. See, right now, this is... this is called sand. Hmm. Why has this become sand? If you put enough organic content into this, this soil. will become soil. Hmm. If you take away all the organic content from the soil, it will become sand. sand. This is called as desertification. Yeah. So, you so, can't cultivate on it? No. Hmm. Desertification is the most serious problem in the world right now. Large parts of the world are becoming like this. You flew in from Mumbai, right? Yes. Well, that is not so stark, but if you fly from here, from Coimbatore to Delhi, mm. every five minutes you look out of the window. You must get a window seat for that, okay? I always get a window yeah. seat. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be looking at your neighbor. That's not <laughs> or the <good>. aisle. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you look out, you will see almost the entire country, except Western Ghat region mm. and Northeastern region. Almost the entire country Bad. looks like a brown desert. Yeah. This is what we have done with industrial farming. What industrial farming means is, we just forgot that you have to keep the soil rich. Rich. What is richness of soil? What does soil rich mean? See, right now your textbooks told you, if you have nitrogen, phosphorus, this one and that one, crops will come. Hmm. This is a complete misunderstanding of life. See, right now you may eat the be best food. You cannot digest this food yeah. unless there is gut microbiome. Yeah. Without the help of the microorganisms, you yeah. cannot digest the food that you yes. eat. Sixty percent of your body itself is microbes. Only forty percent your parents own. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have nothing. <laughs> nothing is of our own. You own the micro microbes. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got to manage then that's them, that's fair. what I'm Forty percent <laughs> of the genetic material has come from the parentage. Rest is all... Microorganisms. microorganisms. The same is true on a much bigger scale in For the soil. soil. If this tree has to get nourishment, it can't just take nitrogen, phosphorus, whatever it needs from the soil. Mm. It has to exchange with the microbes. The microbes are, uh, you know, real traders. They are... their Merchant. trading is so sophisticated, mm -hmm. only a little bit of study has happened to this, but whatever they have revealed is so absolutely spectacular business scene down yeah. there. It is more sophisticated and complex than any stock market in the world. <laughs> okay. Always... I mean, the tree is always trying to throw out more leaf. Why it is throwing out more leaf is because it wants to do photosynthesis. Mm. What photosynthesis means is it wants to use the perpetual energy of the sun, sun. to absorb carbon particles from the air and make carbon sugars out of it because that's the only currency these guys deal with. Yeah. Without carbon sugars, they won't give any nutrient to the tree. Yeah. So, you can experiment, don't do this, I'm just telling you, uh, because it'll be cruel. You... let's say this tree is very healthy and nice. Just make sure every leaf you just remove, okay? Don't allow the leaves to be there for one year. You'll see the tree will die. Die. Even though it's well rooted, there is a stream passing next by, it cannot survive because if it doesn't exchange carbon, it doesn't have cash. Mm. That's what it means. Yeah. You don't have cash, now you are... Uh, don't have food to eat. Mm. That's what happens to the tree if you take away its ability to do photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is one of the most phenomenal things that have happened 
in the universe, because nowhere else in this universe has it happened. Mm. It only happened here. From simple microorganisms to algae and fungi that came up, only when photosynthesis began to happen, begin to happen, that is when life started bursting out because now you are uh, powered by perpetual energy from mm. the sun. At that time, whatever a billion years ago, whatever the time, uh, the oxygen content... Was much more. No, oxygen content in the atmosphere was less than two percent. Oh? Yes. Today it is twenty-one percent. Don't read the textbooks, that's what I'm telling you. Must not. <laughs> I was right in school. <laughs> I, shh, the school I'm teacher. sorry. I don't know why they call me an influencer, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it was less than two percent, today mm. it's twenty-one percent, so it's conducive for you and me to live. So yeah. If it goes down below fifteen percent, we can't live here, mm. okay? So, how is this happening? This is happening only because of photosynthesis. Right now... How the reduction or, or no, the increase? increase. Ah, increase. The increase Got in it. oxygen mm. is happening only because of photosynthesis. Mm. If... If you just look at the surface of the planet, how much photosynthesis was happening, let's mm. say a thousand years ago or even five hundred years ago, and how much is happening now, happening now it's come down significantly, yeah. okay? Because nearly seventy-one percent of the world's land is ploughed right now. Yeah. And another two to three percent is paved. In India, eighty-four percent of the land is ploughed. Mm. So, all this, only when the crop is on, there is a minor amount of photosynthesis. When the crop is gone, there is no photosynthesis there. But Sadhguru, I mean, I remember you saying uh, why ploughing uh, is killing the soil is because then the organi mm -hmm. microorganisms are left open for the sun and then that's where they get destroyed. But if not ploughing, then how else does farming go around? See, what does the farm need? What does it need? What does it take for uh, any vegetative matter to grow? Do you see all the vegetation here is really bursting out? Yeah. You think they have been ploughing here? But then how do the farmers get around no, the No, no, I'll year? come to that. Okay. They're not ploughing here, right? Yeah. So what is needed is humus. Why ploughing? First of all, why ploughing? Ploughing is to oxygenate the soil. You want to open it up. If it's hard packed, you want to open it up like that. If you want to open it up, the best way to do it is when the organic content is high, the level of micro uh, activity is, is such that it becomes very porous. That's why it is holding the water. Okay. But, okay, if you look at a soil particle, it's like sponge, it just opens up and it absorbs water. It can hold eight hundred percent more water than all the rivers on the planet put together. That is the capacity of the soil. Right now, because of, uh, you know, we've done many mistakes. One biggest mistake is major dams in the world. Today, United States has decommissioned nine hundred major dams in USA because they realize it's wrong. But we are still building dams. Because population is demanding, um, my field wants water, your field wants water. See, if you raise the organic content in the soil, right now it's uh, in sixty-two percent of India's land, it's less than zero-five percent. If you raise it to eight to ten percent, your irrigation requirement will come down to thirty percent of what it is right now. If you don't understand what I'm saying, let's walk down, it's been two and a half months, it's rained, just with our hands, if you dig in this forest, it'll be wet. Yeah. That's all the tree needs. Yeah. Or that's all the crop needs. The plant needs damp soil because only in damp soil, microbes thrive. Because they will multiply into billions and billions. Making and the soil richer. Yes. That richness is what the soil... the plant wants. Mm. But right now, we are irrigating and irrigating. If you raise the organic content to twelve to fifteen percent, your irrigation requirement will come down to ten to fifteen percent. Instead of one hundred liters, you would use fifteen liters. Would it make a difference to the world? Definitely. You can at least brush your teeth twice a day. I'm that is true. <laughs> because a lot of people are claiming they stop brushing their teeth because of water shortage. I think that's just a lame excuse more than water shortage. No, but... the, that is, uh, you know, climate change. <laughs> <laughs> that is climate change. <laughs> Bad breaths is causing uh, oxygen depletion. <laughs> <laughs> but Sadhguru, tell me something, um, 
you say that if we don't plow uh, and we let and we follow nature's way of farming no, don't call it all those names the important thing is what does a plant need a given plant mm. different plants may need slightly different requirements because yeah, it's a phenomenal thing see like, let us say this species of trees which is here if you study the soil right beneath it there will be let us say a billion varieties of microorganisms all concentrated there but if you find another species hmm. and go to It'll the be root, different those species are very different hmm. so i'm saying they all deal with each other in a different way according to their needs who provides them what they need accordingly the marketplace is going on there hmm. so somebody goes to sabji market somebody goes to the grain market somebody goes to the fish market it's their choice yeah. that is how sophisticated and complex it is so for a given plant what needs to come you don't have to decide you just have to create humus what humus means is there is enough organic material substance for microorganisms to thrive in fact the word human comes, comes from the word humus. humus all right so what we could call as our body is just the very soil that we walk upon how rich it is is how rich our body will be because of this the nutritional drop in the world is is actually a basmo mm. it is so terrible right now for example in united states i'm taking united states as an example because that's the only place where the studies have happened mm. elaborately also it's a very influential uh, that is one thing but in other countries country. that level of studies have Hasn't not happened. happened yeah these days it's fashionable to eat salads people are eating lettuce and this and that okay let's take a leaf of lettuce what it used to have in early 20th century let's say 1920 and what it has today is only 10% of the nourishment what it had a century ago so you are getting only 10% mm. so you have to eat 10 10 times more is more. it practical to do that no if you ate one orange in 1920 in 2022 you must eat eight oranges to get the same stuff mm. see that's playing up in every other country generally pandemic is you know in india with such concentration of population generally it's under control still unfortunately some people are dying but uh, generally under control even though the concentration is such even today in united states the daily deaths are around 2000 yeah the most richest country in the world with the highest level of medical infrastructure on the planet but nothing but happening. variety of nourishment available but it's not happening one important reason is lack of nourishment in the food that you're eating you're eating food but what is needed is not there mm. it's all pumped up food yeah. all right so it is uh, it is not some rocket science if you ask any maybe these children will know but if you ask any doctor not some expert a simple doctor if you ask him if you have to resist upper respiratory tract infections you must have vitamin e a d b b6 b12 iron foliate mm. magnesium zinc these things are needed in the food that you eat and in the body if these things are not there you become very susceptible to this mm. today the studies show that 43% of american population lacks vitamin c 40% lacks uh, calcium some 37% lacks magnesium 90% lacks vitamin e mm. so when there is no nourishment you become susceptible to everything but somewhere else see in africa i don't think they have delivered vaccines to everybody except yeah. in the urban centers nobody is dying there yeah. because they are living in the land so our resistance levels are coming down we will become more and more susceptible how long will we run this population only with vaccines and medicines endlessly that's not the way to conduct life mm. we need to strengthen the life on top of it if something comes yes we have to take medicine or vaccine or whatever it takes to get rid of that but uh, fundamentally to make the It life strong to make the internal stuff of the life strong uh, strong does not mean just biceps mm. so people think today strong means lot of muscle like this yeah. that is not the strength of life the strength mm. of life is in just the richness of the microbial activity that's happening in your system without damaging your system mm. well people can also ask uh, even a virus is microbe what mm. is the problem yeah 
Uh, yes, if we had all the other guys ready, yeah. they would handle him. Mm. But we don't have. Yeah. So that is why it's become a problem. You know, Sadhguru, a lot of times when there's conversations around save the soil or there's conversations around climate change, um, and I only speak for my audience, which is between the age of say 13 to 25, most of them. Uh, a common question that comes to me is ki Pradakta, okay, great, now we know about this, but what can we do? I mean, if we talk about the soil, then bachpan se toh hume hai na ki the farmers are working on land and they are responsible and they know how to take care, they have direct contact with the soil. How can we sitting in our cities or towns back home, mm -hmm. in front of our laptops or at all in any way, make a difference which is, which actually adds on to this? <laughs> We'll take Indian farmers. How many Indian farmers have a lap laptop and a Wi-Fi connection? I do not know. What do you think? Not Out of sixty-five percent of the population is in farming. How many do you think actually have? Not many. Uh, not many at all, ten, yeah. fifteen percent, mm. maybe twenty percent at the most. So who is to give them a voice? They're just doing what they're being told because Things suddenly changed forty, fifty years ago and they've still not figured out. They still don't know what is nitrogen, what is potash, what is yeah. this and that, all right? Yeah. I'm saying a guy who's selling the mm. fertilizer says, I put fifty kilograms means he'll put fifty kilograms. Put hundred and fifty kilograms means he'll put hundred and fifty kilograms. Mm. So I'm saying that is his level of knowledge. Now, we are not against fertilizer or insecticide or anything. But it must be done in a doctored way. Mm. Right now, you are healthy, you're eating good food, but we checked your blood and we found your iron is little weak. I will give you a pill for two months to yeah, bridge that, mm. just to bridge that situation. Yeah. Now you don't eat anything, you just eat those pills, that's not going to work. Now uh, school girls are here, suppose they got lice in their hair, we'll put little poison into their head, all right? <laughs> But... Or as we call it, the internet sometimes <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you can't do that all the time, uh, dip them in poison and take them out, yeah. all right? <laughs> so, I'm saying all these things, as it is doctored for a human being, it needs to be doctored for the land, because that is the basis of who we are. Yeah. Right now, we're doing... we're plastering the land with chemicals. Yeah. That is the damage that's happening. So, what can these young people do? See, this is the first time in the history of humanity that we can sit here and talk to the entire world. Yeah. All right? Many great beings have come, but when they spoke, hardly ten people could hear them. Mm. This is the first time. When you have this privilege that you can actually talk to the world, why don't you talk some sense, I'm asking? Why don't you talk something that will matter to your life tomorrow? Because every responsible scientist in the world is clearly pointing out by 2045, we will be producing 40% less food and our population will be over 9 billion. Is that a world that you want to live in? I can just die 10 years early and go, all right? I've done my life. <laughs> but the young people, do they want to live in that world? Do we want to leave our children in that world? Food shortages are not a joke. Yeah. Once food shortages come, your entire civilization will collapse, mm. okay? Just imagine Coimbatore city, let's say thirty, forty percent of the people don't have food to eat, three days. You think that city will maintain any civilized behavior? Yeah. Many UN agencies are predicting by 2035, there will be dozens of civil wars across the country, food fights, food riots happening everywhere. We don't want the world to go in that direction. There is an opportunity to turn this around and especially now it's important because this is the cusp of time. If we act now, in the next ten, fifteen years, we can turn this around significantly. Mm. But if you let it go for another thirty, forty years, the biodiversity loss is at a pace where on an average twenty-seven thousand species of microbes are going extinct per year. Per year? Per year. If you go at this pace, in forty years' time, you'll reach a place, if you want to turn the soil around, it'll take hundred and fifty to two hundred years. Don't push the world there, that's all I'm saying. And you have the power of just picking up your phone and reaching hundred people. Yeah. Please do that. 
Just do that. It. You don't have to go and fix the soil. Right now, the most important thing is to change the policy. Why policy? See, right now, this place is good. This is attached to our yoga center. We will make sure it is like this. It will be written into the policy of the yoga center. No matter what happens after hundred years, two hundred years, we have what kind of pressure you get, we can only build that much. For example, in United States, we have nearly twenty thousand acres of forest. In Tennessee. Yeah. We have committed seventy percent to conservation. Mm. It is written into the constitution of the foundation. We will never use the seventy percent. It will always remain forest. Only thirty percent we will build. It's a financial sacrifice, all yeah. right? But you need to do that. But we are an organization. Mm. But now the governments need to do that. The nations need to do that. That you have to set a policy. We are not even talking about land usage. We are just talking about this. If you're you, if you're doing agriculture on a given land, there must be minimum three to six percent organic content. Mm. Because soil is not our property. It's a legacy that we have received. We must pass it on that way to future generations. Otherwise, what kind of people are we? Yeah. All right? So, this is something you can do for policy change in a democracy, you must understand. There are only two things which are most important, your vote and your voice. Mm. Well, if you're thirteen, you still don't have a vo vote, but Which you have, have a loud voice, voice right? And Wi-Fi. That's what I'm saying. That's a loud <laughs> voice. That's a loud voice. <laughs> <laughs> that is, if I sit here and shout, only till there it'll be heard. If you shout in front of with your Wi-Fi on, it'll be heard across the world. The world. So please do that, because we want to move at least three to 3.5 billion people. Because 3.5 billion people means sixty percent of the world's electorate. Mm. We have written to 730 political parties in the world, because we want them to make soil and ecology part of their political manifestos. But for this to happen, people should raise yeah. their voice. Because people have not said anything profound. Yeah. People have not said any commitment. People have not expressed their commitment for long-term well-being of their nations or the world. Mm. Only somewhere in the Tea Party they're talking. Yeah. That's not enough. Raise your voice for one hundred days, from March twenty-first, one hundred days, every day talk soil, something, say something. Sadhguru, um, my last question. Are there any immediate lifestyle changes that you can make? Because like you said, the soil goes into the food, the food goes into us, and that is what has been affecting us for many, many years now. Are there any immediate lifestyle changes that you can make uh, to kind of uh, do our bit in the whole process? There are... there are many things you could do. I am not even asking that from people right now, mm. because... Even the smallest sacrifice, if you ask, people scream as if something is being taken away. I'm saying, do your life the way you want. Just raise your voice. Let's make the policy changes. We've been working on this for the last two years now. In the last eight months, we've worked with various governments. Almost every government and leaders that I've spoken to, they're all willing, but people have not spoken. So you must understand, for any administration, if they have to invest some money into something, Something else will be forsaken, right? Mm. Because resource is always scarce, whether it's an individual or a nation, that is the same situation. For this, people have to speak and say, we want long-term investment. We will go through this. So right now, that is the lifestyle change. When they make the policy changes, if government has to invest in enhancing the organic content, it's not any big money, nothing real big change will happen in your lifestyle. But small things, if they happen, take that, no? Instead of using, ni using nylon clothes, use some cotton, silk, uh, linen, uh, whatever, Leaves, you know? Yeah. Some organic clothing you use, this is a simple change you can make. Fair enough. And we hear that there is a bike ride. <laughs> a rally where you are going to go uh, across nations, cities, borders, talking about uh, soil and its importance. Please tell us about it. Uh, well, we're starting from London on uh, 21st of March, lone motorcycle. Just one? Huh? Just one motorcycle? Just one. 
riding from London through Europe down to Arabia and going through entire Arabia and entering India. We touch uh, Delhi in seventy-five days because it's India seventy-five. Mm. So, uh, I'm also carrying an India seventy-five flag with me. So, that is being done and we will do certain things related to that. And then we're coming down to Kaveri and we're reaching here, the yoga center on 21st of June, which is the International Yoga Day. Yes. See how calendar it is organized oh, wow. for me <laughs> <laughs> That is wonderful. And anyway, 5th of June, 75 days when I reach Delhi, it's a World Environment Day. Yes. And the day I start on 21st of March is World Forest Day. How's this? It's God's plan. But Sadhguru, <laughs> it's always a pleasure talking so to you. So why going through these nations, everything is... One okay. must understand that when it comes to ecology, there is no nation. Planet and the life on the planet does not recognize your nationhood, your race, religion, whatever you belong to. Because these are all fancy things you made up in your head. Here in the soil, it's just life and life. Yeah. For life, there is no borders. So, trying to manifest that in many ways. And above all, we're meeting many heads of state, environment ministers, agriculture ministers. We have written a policy document, mm. which we will take to each one of these nations, specific documents for every nation, separately. It's taken a lot of effort with our scientific team to do this. So, we will be presenting this and a larger document, which is a soft document, will be available to everybody to see what this document is, is hundreds of ways in which you can regenerate the soil. Do it whichever way, depending on your latitudinal position, the regions in which you are, the soil types that you have, economic conditions of a given nation, and of course the agricultural traditions of that nation, because you cannot change agricultural traditions overnight, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Even if you come up with a genius idea, it won't change unless it syncs with the existing traditions. Yeah. So, looking at all these, we have done hundreds of ways in to which... To make you can... easier transitions. Yes. And we are also setting up a, a committee which will handhold small nations. So, we are signing MOUs with many nations. Mm. Already about eleven, fourteen nations, I think, are coming through already. Others will come through. That is amazing. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And it has been lovely... Don't say thank you. Say, let us make it happen. Let's make it happen. Yeah. Let's do it. In this generation, if we don't do it, we'll reject. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this was... Wow, it felt like two minutes, but it was quite Th something. This has been a sane conversation. It has been a sane conversation. <laughs> this has been sane. Every now and then, uh, I find reasons to talk to you. So then I can uh, uh, put the sane in the mostly sane. It makes sense then. Thank you, Sadhguru. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Wonderful talking to you. <laughs> Thank you, Sajjana. Thank you okay. so much. This is not going to look nice on the same soil poster. <laughs> hey, that's good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> How passionate is that? No, when, when I talk about soil, I'll, I'll tear up naturally. Oh, no. So, even you are doing it, that's good. That means you're passionate about it, not just talking about it. Your heart should beat for soil.